Hi friends and welcome to Little Pod School. My kids are screaming upstairs, but that's nothing new here, you guys. I have three kids and one on the way, so please bear with me as there are going to be inevitable interruptions or kids yelling in the background. That's just story of my life. If you don't already know me, my name is Tiffany and I am Little Pod School here on YouTube and Little Pod School slash Rod Pod Mama on Instagram. Um, hello, it is so nice to meet you. If you are new, why don't you consider subscribing and getting to know me a little bit better. If you are returning here, hello and welcome back. Hi, I have some questions from you guys that I wanna answer today. I love discussing motherhood and homeschooling stuff here on this channel that just feels good it feels appropriate in this season of my life and that's what i love to share the most about um and so i was really quite overdue for a q a um i was off of social media for several months at the beginning of this pregnancy i was kind of suffering through hyperemesis and it was really really tough for me i've shared about that in a life update video i'll go ahead and link it down below in the description box or maybe put a card up for you so that you can check that out but i was absent and i accumulated a lot of questions and so i'm just gonna to try to knock out as many of those as I can here in just one compiled video. So I hope that you guys don't mind this type of video. I hope you enjoy Q and A's. And then if you guys are really interested in a particular topic, let me know in the comments down below and I will happily make a dedicated video for those things, if that makes sense. Now let's jump right into those questions because I have a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> let's dive in. The first question, I'm, I have different versions of it, so I'm just going to kind of um, compile it into one answer. But a lot of people ask me to talk about how I homeschool through chronic illness, how I homeschooled through morning sickness and through fatigue and how I've gotten through that. Um, if you're unfamiliar with me and my personal journey, my personal story, um, I had a miscarriage that was very, very awful last October. It has been exactly one year since that happened. I am since pregnant again, and it is a huge blessing. But from last October up until May, early June-ish, when I found out I was pregnant, um, I had this like crazy bad bout of chronic fatigue and chronic illness and I had an autoimmune disorder pop up. I had a rare disorder connected to the blood loss that I experienced with my miscarriage. I'm sorry if that's TMI, but it's a very rare syndrome that some women develop. And so I had some very specific health needs. It was honestly a really, really, really rough season of my life. And how did I homeschool through that? I don't know. I don't know. At the same time that a lot of that was happening, also we had coronavirus kind of take over the world and put us on lockdown. We had bad weather keeping us at home. We had a lot of things kind of compiled all together. And so um, the best advice that I can give you if you are struggling through chronic illness, that's just what I'm going to call it right now, whether it is, you know, in pregnancy, it's temporary or whether it's permanent, I'm going to call it chronic illness. That's just what I'm going to refer to it as if you are going through that is to number one, don't be afraid to spend money on what works for you. That was something that was really hard for me. It was hard for me to kind of invest in different treatments that um, weren't maybe covered by insurance and, and could possibly help me. It was something that I had to discuss with my husband and say, you know what, uh, we're at the end of our rope here with my health and we've got to try other options. It has to get better. It has to. Prayer, yes, does a lot of things for your soul, but but there are a lot of things that you can take care of physically and homeopathically and just do it in a natural way. And so that was something that we had to make room for in our budget. I would say that is probably my number one tip because it's hard for us to let go of that, mamas. It's hard for us to want to invest in us because we want to buy homeschool curriculum. We want to buy clothes for our kids. We want to just save up for the little things that we want to spend money on. And so it's really hard for us to spend money on ourselves. It's hard for us to take ourselves out for a pedicure or a haircut. I haven't gotten my haircut in so long, but that's also because things were shut down. But if you know what I mean, it's hard for us to pay attention to ourselves. And so dedicate, al allow some room for that. Allow some room. I invested in some natural supplements. I'm happy to talk with you about them. If you want to DM me about it, email me. 
they helped me so much and the proof was in my blood work. So that's what I'm going to say about that. And then also, please, please give yourself some grace. Yes, there are practical tips I can give you about how we did read alouds while I was laying on the couch. We kind of shortened our list of expectations of things that I wanted to accomplish. And we got down to only the bare minimum, the bare minimum of math and language arts and maybe a read aloud and Bible time. We really shortened the amount of things that I wanted to get done and put other things like science and history and crafts and field trips on the back burner. And it was just temporary while we were in survival mode. But even more than that, you need to give yourself some grace. The reason I say you need to extend yourself some grace is because God extends it freely to us. It's there whenever we need it, whenever we ask for it. And the way that I mean is by understanding that God wouldn't have put it in your path to homeschool. He wouldn't have put it on your heart to homeschool. He wouldn't have made you have this gut-wrenching feeling that you needed to pull your kid out of public school or private, whatever. However you ended up where you're at, he wouldn't have done that if he wasn't also going to equip you for the road ahead. I clearly have a lot of experience in this area, I think. And so if you want more tips and practical logistics of how to get through that sort of tough season, leave me a comment down below and I will make a video in addition to this one just because I don't want this one to be like an hour long. <laughs> the next question I have is, um, how can I make learning more immersive and fun? We're doing distance learning. This family is doing distance learning with their um, children and it's just dry. <laughs> and so this mama asked me, how can she make learning more fun? How can they continue that desire to learn and, and make it fun throughout the day? And so um, what I would say is to kind of start thinking about how you can cultivate an environment that just surrounds learning like and it promotes curiosity and so I always say that I want to uh, just plant those seeds of curiosity in our kids I want them to ask questions about everything I want them to learn from anything and so I would start by maybe reading a good read aloud together um, something that will prompt other questions for example if you want to read Charlotte's Web to your kids if they're around the Charlotte's Web kind of age um, get some books about farm animals and maybe they'll ask additional questions to that. Um, start with something family style. I wouldn't throw in some additional workbooks or anything like that uh, to add to their already um, existing curriculum that they have going on through their school. Uh, what I would do is just add a sort of tradition that you do as a family that cultivates that curiosity. And so a read aloud is a great place to start because it's something that you read together and then you can branch off and fall down the rabbit trail. And so a read aloud is a really, really great place to start because you're going to have inevitable questions. Your kids are going to just be curious. They're going to ask different things and you can do crafts. You can go on field trips. A read aloud can take you so many places. So I would definitely start with that. And on the subject of read alouds, I got several questions about where to start. Um, and this specific one says, where do I start? My kids are young. Her kids are young, two years old, and then a baby. Where do I start? And I would say classics. Classics are a great place to start, but some children don't like classics. So it just depends on your kid and what they like. I will go ahead and link some of the Read Aloud Revival by Sarah McKenzie book lists down in the description box below. I think those are a really great place to start. She has different book lists for different um themes and different age levels and stuff like that. I think that's a really good resource. I have gone to it several times, but also I don't want you mamas to forget if your kids are interested in like cars, the cars movies, and they really like Lightning McQueen, or if they're into Paw Patrol and they really like those characters, buy books about that. You're, you're going to start to cultivate that love of reading. I'm going to use the word cultivate a lot in this video, I feel. <laughs> um, and so you're just going to promote that excitement through reading aloud with them. It's going to become a tradition, something that you do together, and your kids are going to crave it more and more. I've seen it time and time again with each of our boys. They all kind of fall in love with learning because we do it so much as a family, and we did it even before we became official homeschoolers. So um, that is just my best advice is to start them with what they're interested in. If they like princesses, if they like a certain show on Disney or a movie if they like cinderella find books about cinderella find what your kid likes and that will get them hooked i promise 
but this one says, um, how many pages of math do you do per day? Now that question can be a little bit loaded because things can vary um, per kid and their style of learning and maybe we're using a different curriculum, a different math curriculum for their different age levels. Um, but I would say um, a good two pages is kind of our goal. However, I like to go more by time. So my little little guy he only spends like 10 or 15 minutes working on counting and maybe adding a couple of things together and then my six-year-old my goal for him is 30 minutes 30 solid minutes of math now that may not be all 30 minutes filling out a worksheet we may only do 10 minutes of a worksheet, maybe 15, and then spend another 15 minutes playing a math game. And so this is why I say I kind of gauge that based on each child's specific needs. I also have my oldest child working on teaching textbooks. And one lesson of teaching textbooks can take him about 30 minutes to an hour. It just depends on kind of what standards he's meeting in that lesson. So I would say we gauge more on like a time scale rather than how many pages we've completed. This mama, oh, her heart. Um, she needs advice and help for moms, uh, special needs moms. She has a nonverbal autistic son. And girl, I um, am going to add you to my prayer list so I can pray for you. Um, first off, because I do have some kids with some specific needs, but I do not have a nonverbal autistic son. And I know that that comes with its own territory of needs and and things that, that you have to worry about and you have to address and you have to support and encourage. And so um, what I want to say is um, I'm going to try to find some resources for you, Mama, um, and link them in the description box if I can and just link you up with some special needs mamas, first of all. And second of all, I want to go back to that idea that I touched on with chronic illness for Mama and just remind you that God wouldn't have given you your specific baby. You are the perfect mama for that baby and that child, I should say. I call my, all my children babies, even my 10-year-old. Um, but you, you were chosen. You were chosen for this role. Do not forget that. Do not forget that the Lord is going to equip you, but you have to ask him. You've got to pray that out. If you are needing to outsource with resources and therapy and or whatever that may be, um, don't forget to ask the Lord for those specific needs because he hears them. Um, I want to link you up with Leilani from Living with Eve. She is one of my favorite YouTube mamas. Leilani is so, so good at what she does. She is a former like public school teacher turned homeschooling mama, and she has a special needs daughter. She shares all about that. I want you to look at some of Leilani's videos because I feel like she has just a heart of gold when it comes to that. And um, it actually just gave me glory bumps talking about that because um, I think that that is her gift, that's her ministry. And so um, I wanna recommend Leilani's channel to you to um, check that out and see if she has any advice and wisdom that I cannot give you right now, friend, but I will be praying for you. Okay, and then this mama asked, are curriculum covered by charter schools? Um, can you buy Christian-based curriculum with their funds? Um, and this, I'm going to probably make an update video because my How to Homeschool in California video has since gotten a lot of views and a lot of questions. Um, but the short answer is you cannot buy Christian-based curriculum using public charter school funds if you're with a public charter school, which most of them are. Um, you can buy neutral curriculum that is not super secular. Um, you have the freedom to choose there. You just can't buy like a Becca or Bob Jones University with those funds. And that's because you wouldn't see that type of curriculum in the public schools, right? You wouldn't see that in a regular classroom. So you are not allowed to buy that. Those are things that you're going to have to budget out um, in your own family budget for homeschool. Um, but there are ways to work around um, getting like um, neutral curriculum, which we use a lot of. And I have shown that in other videos. I've shown how we kind of adapt neutral curriculum and add in biblical aspects and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to probably have more stuff about that here on my channel in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, this question, um, I, I have a lot to say, but I'm going to try to keep it short. Opinions on whether children can go to a reputable college after they homeschool? Um, I can give a really loaded answer, but I'm going to give you the shortest one I can. And I think 
homeschooled children are just as likely to go to college as regularly traditionally schooled children are. I think it depends on the emphasis that you put on that in your family. Personally, we have no problem. Um, also, in addition to promoting college to our children, um, leaving trade school on the table for them. Um, my husband is an example of that. He he knows how to weld, he knows how to operate equipment. He is He's one of those people that didn't want to go to college and he tried college. He didn't like reading books, he didn't like writing papers. He likes to do things with his hands. And so we have no problem supporting our children's interests in those type of schools. And I think that now more than ever, we're seeing like windows of opportunity and acceptance happen for homeschooling families. And I think that's awesome. We're seeing a lot more colleges just be open to the idea of homeschoolers. And a lot of homeschoolers tend to be um, more creative. They tend to have nourishment in the areas that they want to pursue in the long term because parents are able to kind of tailor make their uh, education and tailor to, tailor to their needs and interests. And so we're seeing a lot of colleges just kind of um, accept those kids because those kids are ready. They're, they're not just college bound, they're career bound because they have that mindset and they've been thinking of that for years. So um, yeah, I think that homeschooled children are just as likely to go to college um, as, you know, traditionally schooled kids. Okay, this next question says, can you share more about All About Reading newbie here? Um, yes, I have more videos about All About Reading coming up because you guys have a lot of questions about them, but they need dedicated videos. So I will be filming those soon. Sorry, I have I have a little toddler right here. Okay, you're gonna hear little footsteps around here because I have my toddler um, looming over me. He's ready for me to be done filming. Uh, the next question says, yes. The next question says, does Grammar Galaxy include writing? I have a reluctant writer. Yes, Grammar Galaxy does include um, instruction about composition. It does walk you through that in each of the levels. Um, but I will make an updated Grammar Galaxy video. If that's something you guys wanna see, let me know in the comments down below. I get a lot of questions about that curriculum because it's something that we don't see a lot of on YouTube yet. It's kind of a fairly new brand and so there aren't a lot of people talking about it. So yes, I will talk about Grammar Galaxy more in the future. The next question says, how many calendar days are in a homeschooling year? There are technically 180 in a homeschooling year. Um, those are just the required amount of days that you're supposed to incorporate learning. Um, that looks different for every family. Uh, depending on your situation, if you are a private school affidavit, family and you are sort of independently homeschooling, you can do that learning um, and make it look however you want it to look. So you can do three weeks on, one week off. You can do six weeks on, two weeks off. You could take breaks as you would like. Um, if you're with a charter school like we are, they're a little bit more uh, strict. They want you to track your calendar days and stuff like that. I don't mind it. I like the accountability right now in this season of life. Um, that's just what works for us. Um, but those 180 days of required learning may look different depending on your situation for your individual family. This next one says, can you do more videos about Story of the World? Yes, girl, I know a lot of people have asked me to talk more about Story of the World. It is one of the most common questions I get like on Instagram. I get a lot of questions about Story of the World because I've posted things that my kids have memorized and fun stuff we're working on and unit studies I'm working on. And so, yeah, I know a lot of people wanna know about Story of the World. I'm actually gonna have another video coming soon. I don't know if it's gonna be before this or after this, talking about the subjects we do as a family that will include Story of the World and kind of how I incorporate other resources along with that curriculum. So it's coming soon. And then the last question says that they, they want to know more about logistics. They want more day in the life type of videos. And I think that I mentioned that um, in my previous video. Um, one of my previous videos is life update. And I've just kind of talked about maybe my reluctance <laughs> of sharing day in the life stuff. I know it's what you guys want. Um, I'm just trying to find a way to do that without showing my whole house. I've kind of been uh, enlightened or hyper aware of the uh, stranger danger kind of aspect of the internet. And especially because we just moved, not wanting to show the whole layout of our house and stuff like that. So I do want to plan on doing that maybe once in a while for you guys. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to creatively lay that out for you. Sorry guys, I had my neighbor leaf blowing, my dog barking, and my toddler interrupting this video. 
Uh, so I'm sorry if this was really informal here, but I just wanted to answer your questions as best as I could. Uh, please leave any additional ones you might have down in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and um, leave a little waving emoji if it's been a while since I've seen you in a video. Um, I'm happy to be back and happy to be creating content once again. And I will see you guys soon. We'll talk more about motherhood and homeschooling next week. Bye.